Good afternoon guys from Douglas Isle of Man um, where this afternoon I am hopefully taking the HSC Manannan, the Isle of Man Steve Packet uh, Company's uh, fast craft catamaran vessel um, from Douglas here um, over to Liverpool. Uh, I say hopefully because it's really windy here and we're going to get an announcement at 1400 hours of uh, sailing is supposed to supposed to depart Douglas at 1500 hours and the wind is supposed to be dying down we've had uh, strong winds here gusting between 45 to 52 miles an hour uh, but yeah it's supposed to be calming down a little bit later so um, we'll see how we go shall we and um, hopefully I shall catch you on the boat uh, a little bit later on cheers for now Okay, well, you can't miss the ferry port building, I suppose. Uh, well, the Isle of Man Sea Terminal, to give it its proper name. It's the one with the big crown on the top. Hey, uh, yeah, built in 1965. It definitely has that look of the 60s, I think. Anyway, you enter through these doors at the front, and all passenger facilities are on this one level, the upstairs being used for various offices. Now, there's a coster along with a few other retail outlets, and a departure lounge, which was straight ahead through this corridor here. And then right in front of you is the steam packet ticket office and check-in desks. As I said earlier, our sailing was supposed to leave at 3 o'clock, but we didn't go through security until then, uh, where we ended up just hanging around in a corridor until some guy in a high-vis jacket turned up to open the locked door at the far end. And behind that was a much nicer area, I thought, so yeah, why couldn't we have waited in there? But to be honest, the process of queuing up to check in, then queuing for the boarding gate, then going through random security checks on luggage and passengers, and then waiting around in the corridor, this all took well over an hour, which is probably not too dissimilar to the airport really, is it? And, and obviously the boat takes a lot longer to reach its destination than an aircraft would. Well fortunately we weren't in too much of a rush, and we eventually reached the vessel and proceeded to board using this gangway to the side. And you can see here that vehicles drive on through the open doors at the stern in the conventional way. So once on board, it was up some external stairs and then into the rear lounge. This was quite a nice space, uh, the largest area on the boat, with the main bar here and a mix of table and forward facing seating. Uh, we made our way past the various chairs, tables and fruit machines towards the front of the boat uh, where there was some further airline seating. Now we chose some front row seats where we thought, at this point anyway, we'd be able to enjoy some here? glorious views of the crossing. <laughs> <laughs> it finally made it onto the boat and yeah, I don't know how busy it is but we managed to get um, some front seats so we'll be... Uh, Treated to car alarms going off, I would imagine, um, because they bring the cars right through. It's like a little open air bit, um, just behind the bow of the ship. I'll show you that in a minute. Yeah, and it's uh, suitably choppy, so we might even see a little bit of spray coming our way, I think, um, as we get out into the Irish Sea. Okay, well, if you notice that at this point I used the words suitably choppy. Well, here's a clue as to what was to lie ahead. The crew were tying down the vehicles at the front of the boat, uh, which is never a good sign, is it? And sure enough, about an hour into the crossing, I would probably be reconsidering my choice of words and replacing them with probably the most horrendously rough crossing I've ever taken in my life. <laughs> yeah, but as it was, I was quite happily stood on the rear deck at this point, listening to the car alarms going off as we departed Douglas. The sea was relatively calm I thought, but then I guess we were in the shelter of the bay and it wasn't until we were a little bit further out that the captain was able to put his foot down and then we started to experience a bit of a swell.
managed to stay out on the rear deck for quite a while. Uh, but after a particularly loud jolt, I decided it was probably best to seek refuge inside. <laughs> yeah, uh, most people that weren't sitting down at this point were doing their best impressions of comedy walking as they tried to stumble their way around the boat. And I was just as bad to be honest, but I did manage to find my way back to the seat eventually, uh, after which I thought it was probably best to just to uh, stay put for a while and uh, try and ride it out. Right, so, yeah, just been out on, um, on deck. I'm surprised it's open to be honest. Uh, yeah, it's getting pretty rough. There's quite a swell. Um, at the moment. It's alright though. The lady came round, handed out the sick bags. So we've got, at least we're prepared. I was going to have some um, lunch, but uh, late lunch. But uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure we're going to bother now. I might leave it till later. Yeah, well, the cafe bar was closed anyway, to health and safety, I guess. And not that anyone really felt like eating anything. I thought if I sat down and concentrated on the front of the boat, i.e. I could see where I was going, and then it didn't really feel too bad. But if I looked to one side, it was a whole lot worse. The crew were great, actually, and they've seen all this before, haven't they? And, uh, yeah, distributed sick bags to anyone who needed them. There was a lot of vomiting going on. That made me feel even worse, to be honest. And some people felt it was easier to lie on the floor amidships. And what do you think? Have you ever been on a crossing like this? Let me know your tips and advice in the comments below. Well, we were a couple of hours into the journey now, and it had calmed down sufficiently enough for me to be able to make my way back outside. Some people even made their way to the bar. Anyway, the sun was out, and it was starting to become a really lovely evening. Okay, guys, so yeah, I'm just on the, on the boat, we've got about 30 miles uh, to run to, until we get to Liverpool, and yeah, it's been really rough actually. Um, one of the roughest crosses I've been on, and it's actually, believe it or not, it's calmed down at the top. Uh, and we're just heading east, uh, north and north Wales coast, and uh, coming to Liverpool, um, an hour behind schedule. At uh, 1900 hours, it should be long. So, but I mean, the most important thing is that we're going to get there safely. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's been a bit of a wild ride. This is the first time I've been able to get out on the back because um, the, uh, there, was, there was a notice from uh, uh, the ship that everybody needed to remain seated, uh, which is what people did for um, for a lot of people. They uh, they lay on the floor. So, uh, I'm alright. Uh, yeah, it's a bit fun, isn't it? Really, I think. But for some people, it's not. It's, uh, get on with it. So, yeah, I'll, we'll get, I'll try and have a little bit more of a look around the boat now, and, and I'll speak to you again uh, when, when we get uh, near into Liverpool. Quite. Right, thanks for watching. I hope you find it entertaining. I will see you in a bit. Okay, so the main deck uh, where we have been sitting has the Coast to Coast Cafe here, serving hot meals, uh, weather permitting obviously, and uh, a lot of the seats in the vicinity had tables to eat them at. Uh, note that the TV screens were still telling everyone to remain seated, and they would continue to display this message for the duration of the trip. The kitchen had opened up again after the weather had calmed down, but there were very few takers at this point. Uh, to the right of the cafe you have the passenger service desk if you needed it and then beyond that a children's play area which I didn't film for obvious reasons and then two cinema lounges that uh, were supposed to be showing The Addams Family in one and The Lost City in the other uh, but instead they were also displaying the return to your seats message. So continuing back around to the port side you have the shop Ocean Avenue uh, which stocked the usual stuff, books, travel accessories, perfumes etc. And at the rear of the main deck, towards the stern, you have the cafe bar area and the outside space that uh, you've already seen. Now tucked away behind the shop is a narrow flight of stairs leading up to the reserved lounge and premium lounge. And at this point it gives the impression that you can't go up without a ticket. But I went anyway, just to have a look. And at the top of the stairs I found the reserved lounge, where for an extra £7 you could basically just reserve a seat. Though I must say it wasn't very pleasant up here, someone had been sick all over the carpet and the smell was lingering about a bit. 
And then opposite this area on the other side was the premium lounge with table service and free non-alcoholic beverages and newspapers magazines. For an extra £22 though, I don't think it was worth it personally. Now interestingly, there was also a door to the mysterious Members Only Executive Club. Well, I later found out that um, to get through this door it will cost you £375 a year, believe it or not. Um, But then you do get complimentary alcohol... Uh, although only subject to the company's discretion, apparently, whatever that means. Anyway, uh, to the rear of all this exclusiveness, I found some additional deck space, which was much larger than the outside area downstairs. I mean, nobody stopped me going up here or going out onto deck, so I'm assuming anyone can come up and uh, enjoy the views, which, uh, like I said before, on an evening like this were absolutely breathtaking. Crossing overall took around three hours. Uh, Being a catamaran with a top speed of between 40 and 50 knots, it's a lot faster than a conventional ferry, isn't it? Uh, Well, like I said, the first half of the journey was pretty rough, but once we neared the Welsh coast, it calmed down a lot, so that must give some protection from the prevailing wind and currents coming up the Irish Sea, I suppose. Yeah, okay, one or two cars did end up with a few bruises, as you can see here. Uh, But apart from that, uh, no harm done really, and although the weather delayed our departure from Douglas by an hour, we wouldn't have put to sea unless it was deemed safe to do so. In terms of costs, well, basic foot passenger price I paid for this one-way crossing was £21, which I think is great value for money really. I stayed on the top deck as much as I could, just watching the views as we sailed towards Liverpool, and I took a minute to summarise the journey and the overall experience. Okay guys, so it's about it's, um, 18.30 hours and um, we've got about half an hour to run. We're just approaching the Mersey. Now you can see the uh, wind farm off the, um, off the coast of Wales, uh, coast of North Wales there. In the background and the sun is going down. I tell you what, it's been an eventful crossing this. Um, obviously a lot calmer now than it, than it had been for the first half of the uh, journey across the Irish Sea. Um, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it. A little bit of an adventure, wasn't it? Um, let me know what you think of the um, Isle of Man Steam Packet Company in the uh, comments below. Um, my first time with them. Uh, would I try them again? Yes, um, I'll probably try the boat over to Hesham next time, I think. Um, as I said, guys, it's been an eventful trip. I'm looking forward to getting back on land. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, cheers for now.